771 new cases of COVID-19 were reported today, bringing Arkansas's total to more than 32,000. Of those, almost 7,000 people are actively fighting the virus. Our hospitalizations are down to 11 today, bringing our COVID-19 patients to 464. Unfortunately, four more people have died, bringing our total deaths to 357. And let's see which counties are the most impacted right now. Pulaski County has the most active cases tonight with 918. Hot Spring County trails with 749 people. In Northwest Arkansas, Washington County has almost 700 cases and Benton County with close to 500. Other counties with over 200 cases are Sebastian with 378 and Faulkner with 217. And you can now see how hard your neighborhood is impacted by the virus with daily updates on how many cases are in your city. THV 11's Mercedes McKay shows us how officials believe this data is necessary to fight COVID-19 here in Arkansas. The COVID virus is present, it's growing, and it's not in complete control. Dr. Joe Thompson with the Arkansas Center for Health Improvement describes that vicious virus as a threat statewide. I think too often we want to lull ourselves to say, oh, well, this is a poultry processing plant, or this is a big city issue, or this is a, a group of individuals that have been reckless. This is in every city. He hopes more people understand the severity in their communities now that they know the number of cases within their streets. Everyone needs to recognize that the infectiousness is just as great as it ever was. The deadliness is just as great as it ever was, but the prevalence, the pervasiveness is much higher than it ever was. Since the pandemic began, Thompson started to see the need from city leaders that county level data wasn't enough. When the governor and the secretary of Smith gave out county level data, it did not let the mayors articulate and amplify that message to say it's not just in our county, it's in our city. Through collaboration with Arkansas Center for Health Improvement, the Arkansas Department of Health and the Municipal League, a strategy was developed to give the mayors what they had been asking for. On ACHI's website, a table now shows a cumulative number of positive COVID-19 cases and a percentage of individuals from over 200 Arkansas cities as of July 9th. This is going to give us that legitimacy, you might say, uh, to have uh, good, accurate data to the people. The mayor of Dardanelle, Jimmy Witt, believes the more accurate data, the better. Nobody knows our people better than local elected officials. And so if we can get the accurate numbers and accurate information, then we can get it to them quicker and more efficiently. According to the table, the city of Dardanelle has had 303 positive cases with 6.6% .6 of their population affected. Witt says this doesn't alarm him because a lot of these numbers are coming from the poultry factory, nursing homes, and the fact that their zip code goes outside city limits. In relative to the overall population, that's really not bad. Right now, if you look at our overall to total positive cases in the whole county, we're doing pretty good. I, I feel like we've done well. The mayor just wanting to encourage his people to not panic. I just need every, everybody to take a breath. We're going to get through this at some point. We just all need to work together and do, do everything we can to try and help protect each other. In Little Rock, Mercedes McKay, THV 11 News. Active cases should be added to the website within the next couple of weeks. You can access your city's data by going to achi.net. If your town has fewer than 10 positive cases, it won't be on the list. The Arkansas Department of Health will hold multiple testing clinics this week. On Monday, there will be two clinics, one at the St. Francis County Health Unit in Forest City from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. and the other in Conway at the Don Owens Sports Center from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. On Tuesday, ADH will be set up at the Lono County Health Unit in Cabot from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. And on Thursday, tests will be given in the Newport at the Jackson County Health Unit. That will be from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. And in the U.S., the number of confirmed coronavirus cases has climbed above 3.6 million infections, and close to 140,000 people have died. CBS News correspondent Michael George reports from New York on efforts to slow a summer surge across much, much of the nation.
The coronavirus continues its relentless march across the U.S. Florida announced more than 10,000 new cases were confirmed Friday. The city of Miami's new mandatory face mask policy kicks in Monday, carrying fines of up to $500. Dr. Michael Sog, who treats COVID-19 patients in Birmingham, Alabama, had the virus in March. Walking down the road and I don't see people wearing masks and I see a total disregard for what's going on in the world around them, I feel compelled to shout from the rooftops what I'm seeing. 18 states are in a so-called red zone, according to an unpublished report prepared for the White House Coronavirus Task Force. Obtained by CBS News, the report says states seeing large spikes should take more stringent and consistent steps to slow the spread. We've got to do it across the board in those areas. This is serious business and we can turn it around. If, if I didn't think we could do it, I wouldn't be so emphatic. In California, Burbank is one of many areas that have closed off traffic on a main thoroughfare to make way for outdoor seating after the state reimposed restrictions this week. It's going to be kind of tough trying to adjust to this and sit around people and even the wind, the way it's moving, you, don't, you never know. If someone sneezes and while your mask is off. According to all the guidelines, you know, we shouldn't uh, spend time inside, right? So um, it's a concern for the family. Indoor dining, gyms, malls, movie theaters, and more will not be part of New York City's Phase 4 reopening set for Monday. Despite that, Governor Andrew Cuomo says it's inevitable his state will see a second wave of the coronavirus. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Governor Cuomo predicts the second wave will come from lack of compliance and enforcement of prevention measures and from infected people returning from other states. John Lewis has died at the age of 80. Lewis served 33 years in the House of Representatives, played a critical role in the civil rights movement and helped change history. Nancy Cords walks us through his life and legacy. You're marching to our state capital. John Lewis secured his place in history by the time he was 21, a freedom rider who risked his life on buses and at lunch counters to push for desegregation. We do not want our freedom gradually, but we want to be free now. Lewis helped to organize the March on Washington and was the youngest speaker that day in 1963. Two years later, he collided with history again while leading a peaceful march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. This is an unlawful assembly. The brutal crackdown on Edmund Pettus Bridge came to be known as Bloody Sunday. I was the first person to be hit. I thought I was going to down this bridge. In 1986, Atlanta elected Lewis to the U.S. Congress, where he remained devoted to the principles of nonviolent protest, boycotting two presidential inaugurations and organizing a sit-in on the House floor to fight for gun control legislation. I met Rosa Parks in 1957 when I was 17. 1958, I met Dr. King. And these two individuals inspired me to get in trouble. And I've been getting in good trouble, necessary trouble ever since. He crusaded for voting rights until the end. The bill is passed and was a driving force behind the African American History Museum, which now sits on the National Mall. Throughout it all, he remained a happy warrior. Arrested 45 times, he said he smiled in some mugshots because he knew he was on the right side of history. When people tell me nothing has changed, I just feel like saying, come and walk in my shoes. Last month, he visited the new Black Lives Matter Plaza, one block from the White House. It was for a movement, for a movement. A movement inspired in part by his bravery half a century ago. Today, flags are lowered to house staff for Lewis's memory and longstanding public service. Some of our local leaders are also sharing their condolences. Governor Asa Hutchinson says, I am deeply saddened to hear of the passing of Representative John Lewis. During my time in Congress, I grew to have a strong admiration for him and the battles he fought during the civil rights era. We will miss him. And Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr. shares his sentiments, saying, I am saddened to learn of the passing of John Lewis. He was a civil rights icon, a crusader of justice for all, and a masterful legislator. It is up to all of us to continue his work.